Throughout the 13th century, the Mongol Empire thrived. Its nomadic citizens were skilled with bows and arrows on horseback, able to win many wars against the highly developed surrounding empires. However, they were never able to control the strong European empires to the west. Europe was introduced to the amazing success of the Mongols by Marco Polo. Marco Polo was a young merchant from Venice, Italy, born in 1254. His father and uncle had much experience traveling the Silk Road to China for trade purposes. When Polo was 15, his father and uncle left for a long journey where they met the great Khan of the Mongol Empire. They returned home to Italy because the Mongol leader Kublai Khan asked the Polos to bring him a hundred priests and holy water with the Pope's blessing. They did not fulfill Khan's wishes and returned with a mere three priests. However, a young Marco, now 17, was among the returning merchant group. When they arrived in China, specifically during the time of the Yuan Dynasty, they were greeted by the foreign culture of this Asian power. Marco became close with Kublai Khan, gaining his trust and admiration. Khan even gave Marco the job of tax collector and special messenger throughout China and Southeast Asia. The Khan's trust and protection allowed the Polos to move freely within Mongol borders. They did not travel to China as just merchants, but as honored guests of the Khan himself. After 24 years in Mongol territory, the Polos finally decided to return to Italy. However, Kublai Khan would only allow the family to leave if they agreed to escort a Mongol princess to Persia by sea. Though the Polos succeeded in this task, there were many casualties. Polo later wrote that the members of his company were among the only survivors. Once the Polos left the Mongol region, they could no longer rely on Khan's protection and were robbed by the local government of Trebiz, modern Turkey. 9,000 Byzantine coins were stolen from them. When the Polo family had returned, they were greeted by conflict between their homeland of Venice and their rival city, Genoa. Marco Polo decided to help the fight, but was sadly captured by the adversary forces. He ended up in Genoese prison with many other fugitives. The stories of one of the first Europeans to chronicle the cities, cultures, and technologies of the Far East were composed while he was in prison. They were written by a fellow captive, Rusticello of Pisa, a romance author who wrote and sold the many stories Polo had told his fellow inmates. This composition was called The Travels of Marco Polo. Marco Polo had many effects on the modern world. He assisted Western society in the discovery of many Chinese innovations. In his travel logs, readers were introduced to paper money, coal, and eyeglasses. He also offered one of the most detailed historical records of the Mongol post system. It was a complex network of checkpoints and couriers that allowed Mongol leaders to rule their vast empire successfully. Because of the extravagant clothing and advanced technology Polo brought back, many people believed that they would find economic success if they went to Asia themselves. Along with this, Polo's fascinating tales of Asian civilization also influenced many Europeans to venture throughout the Far East. He even motivated Christopher Columbus on his voyage to the Indies, and a copy of The Travels of Marco Polo was found within Columbus's cabin. Marco Polo was a great explorer, and his actions greatly carried many global connections and advancements. Connections between Asia and Europe had thus far been very limited. However, with Marco Polo's influential visit, many more people traveled between the two continents. This encouraged a greater share of information and greater possibility for innovation. The book of Polo's adventures became the most popular book in Europe after its release in 1299, despite many people refusing to believe the foreign tales. Finally, Marco Polo died January 8th 1324, at age 69. His impact on the world was so great that he will forever be remembered throughout history.